Let's talk about email newsletter sending. Do you have an email newsletter? If not, I recommend that you start one. Even if you just start with your, you know, 20 supporters, it's still 20 subscribers to your email newsletter and it's still worth sending them some kind of regular newsletter like once a month is a great starting rhythm. And my recommendation is that you work lightly on your newsletter and never create exclusive content for your newsletter. Yeah, you heard that right. Please do not create exclusive content for your newsletter. I never do that. Well, George, why would they subscribe to your email newsletter? Because people love convenience and they even pay for convenience. And they know that when they go on social media, okay, I'll, talk to, I'll talk about your followers now, your, your ideal fans, your true fans, they love your content. They can't wait to see what you're gonna create next. And they know if they go on social media, they might not catch your content because there's so many other things they have to scroll through. So guess what? You give them the gift of your email newsletter where you gather the best content from you for the past month. That's what I do. And my email list is probably, it's not huge, but it's probably bigger than most of you watch. 5,500, it's going towards 6,000 now. 5,500 subscribers on my email list. And my email open rates are probably higher than most of you watching this. I get an average of 55% open rate. For a list of my size, that's unusual. The people in my industry get about 22%. I get about 55, I get about double, basically more than double actually. Um, more than double actually, uh, two and a half times uh, around uh, the, my industry average. So it's working. And I'll tell you why it works. Because when they open my email newsletter, they get a choice. They are not confronted with some long text, you know, love letter to my subscribers or whatever, or here's my personal update. They might not care. Um, yeah, they care about your journey, but whatever you wrote in your personal update or your love letter, it might not be relevant to them. Stop testing content in your newsletter, email newsletter, okay? You should be testing your content on social media. That's what social media is for. The wonderful, I know some of you hate the social media algorithm, but let's have a positive mindset and say the benefit of the social media algorithm is that it helps you to test content. That's exactly what it's doing. You put stuff on social media and social media algorithm will say, yeah, this wasn't that good. We're going we're gonna to make sure people don't see it. Or, oh my gosh, people really liked it. The initial people really liked it. We're going to bump it up and show it to even more people. The algorithm helps you to test your content all the time. We should, be in, we should be grateful for that. So test your content on social media and then put the best of your content into your email newsletter. This is why it only takes me 10, 10 minutes to 15 minutes at most, 15 minutes at most, whenever I create and send my email newsletter. Only 15 minutes, why? Because I'm not writing anything new. I'm not making anything exclusive. All that stuff goes on social media for, for social media to test it for me, help me test, see what's the best. And then I take the best of and I put it in my email newsletter. And moreover, I, when I, I told you I give my email newsletters uh, readers a choice, right? When they open the newsletter, they, they have a choice of which thing they want to click on. I give them a quick summary of what that piece is about. And this piece is in this, this article. What's that? Summary of it, quick summary. I basically copy and paste from the beginning of my article. And I put the title and I put read more, all right? And then, oh, what this video is about, again, the title of the video, maybe the summary that's already in YouTube, for example, and then watch here or something like that. I give them a choice. So they feel respected to say, okay, I don't have to w work through your personal update or your love letter or whatever. I just, I get a choice of what is relevant to me at this time. They click on it, they go to that social media, if they are not logged, if they don't have account, they can still watch it or read it because I only give links to my public social media posts, the ones that they can watch or read even if they're not logged in. So they don't have to have an account. 
okay? But if they are logged in, which many people are, because most of humanity uses social media, did you know that? Okay, most human beings, most of humanity log into Facebook at least once a month. It's a, the data shows. Um, much of, probably most of your ideal clients have an Instagram account. Um, most of your clients have a YouTube account, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So when you give them the links to these social media posts, whether they're logged in or not, they can see it. And if they're logged in, they can engage with it there. And by engaging with it there, it spreads your content to even more people. So again, why the heck are you putting exclusive content in your newsletter that you worked on? That should be available to people outside your subscriber base for them to engage with it. <clears throat> they will subscribe to your newsletter as a service of convenience because they don't want to miss your best of. I hope you will consider this model. I've been doing it for, I can't, can't at least five years and it's been going extraordinarily well. And um, yeah, so, and it takes me so little time and effort to create my newsletters. Therefore, I can be consistent with it. And that's the thing I'll end on here. If you're not consistent with your email newsletters, your email newsletter subscribers forget who you are. They don't, that the relationship starts to fade away. If you're consistent, then of course they just build that relationship over time. So I hope this is helpful for your lightness of working and your consistency of showing up. Thanks for watching.